brought is a special problem with regard to UFOs. In the early days, it was mostly people who were trying to outdo each other in their stories of being contactees. Uh, they met with aliens. They were taken on trips to the backside of the moon by aliens. And the next guy would say, well, I went to Jupiter and so forth. And this was a limited subgroup of people, the contactees, as they were called. They had their own subculture. One of the people involved with that movement, uh, Gabriel Green, died in 2001. He even ran for president on a ticket as a con UFO contactee. The problem's gotten much more invidious since then, though. We have people ostensibly with credentials who are frauds and who have glommed on to pop culture. Uh, two that come to mind, uh, Robert Scott Lazar, supposedly a nuclear physicist with a master's in physics from MIT, a master in electronics from Caltech, who supposedly worked at Area 51 back engineering flying saucers, figured out how they work using element 115. Uh, it's, it's a long, detailed story. You can buy the video someplace else, not for me. Uh, I did a lot of checking on Bob. I tried to meet with him twice. I was supposed to on one occasion, and he didn't go along. Uh, I checked at MIT. I checked at Caltech. Neither one ever heard of them. Well, but the government wiped his records clean is the response. I talked to the legal counsel at MIT. No way to do that. I talked with the guy who has the degrees, the commencement lists and all that sort of thing. No mention of Lazar. None of the yearbooks show Lazar. Uh, you need it for a master's thesis, uh, well, for a master's degree, you need a thesis. I talked to the guy who holds those, no Lazar item there. Uh, he was asked publicly, when did you get your master's from MIT? Well, let me see now. I think it was, yeah, probably 1982. I have friends who went to MIT. I was accepted there myself, couldn't afford to go out of high school. And... Uh, Nobody who gets a master's degree in physics from MIT doesn't know what year he got it in. He was asked to name some of his professors. Well, let's see now. Uh, he named somebody, Bill, somebody, I won't use his name on the air. Uh, I checked on him. It was not a common name, fortunately. He was a physicist. Uh, the only trouble is Bob said he would remember him from uh, Caltech. This individual, Bill, never taught at Caltech. He only taught at Pierce Junior College. Now, Bob himself had mentioned Pierce to me on the phone. He did go there. Now, that's in Southern California, but and he was going there at the same time that he was supposedly attending MIT, 2,500 miles east of there. One heck of a commute. If you can go to MIT, you don't go to Pierce Junior College. But beyond that, I checked with his high school. He finished in the bottom third of his high school class. You can't get into MIT if you're outside. Usually the top 10, 15, 20 percent of your class. Bottom third, never. Uh, his element 115 scheme won't work. Sounds good, science fiction. So, oh, I checked with Los Alamos. He is in the phone book there. Doesn't that prove that he was a scientist working there? No, it certainly doesn't prove he was a scientist. But if you look at the phone book page, up at the very top it says, this phone book for employees of the Los Alamos National Laboratory, the Department of Energy, Kirk Meyer Corporation, several other companies. Right after Bob's name, and it was only in one phone book issue, they issue them every several months, it says K slash M. That's Kirk Meyer, a subcontractor. He worked out at the Maison facility. Don't need a clearance for that. Uh, people come in from all over the world, physicists, to do experiments, and he was a technician working out there. And the story goes on and on beyond that. And I get people telling me, well, I don't see why you don't believe him. He seems so sincere. Sincerity is not a check on truth. 